All right, welcome everybody. Wait a couple more seconds for uh, everything to uh, uh, settle down. Oh, looks like we're ready. I'm Jim Conrad, and I'm honored to serve as the 2022 president of IEEE Ada Kappa Nu. This is uh, Ada Kappa Nu's first conference for 2022, and I have to tell you, it is a great looking lineup. I hope you enjoyed our first two sessions and that you are looking forward to attending more. I want to thank all of our speakers, presenters, recruiters, volunteers, everyone, and uh, of course, our students for making this event so wonderful so far. And I say so far because we have three more sessions in our first recruitment fair today and a full day of sessions tomorrow and a recruitment fair as well tomorrow. So you have to admit that uh, this is a jam-packed two days. And I hope you are looking forward to attending the sessions, and I look forward to seeing you there. In addition to the scheduled programming, I want to call your attention to our expo hall. Go visit the booths. You can talk directly to hiring managers, recruiters, and experts in various fields from several IEEE technical societies. These representatives are there because they want to meet you. Take advantage of the opportunity to get their advice and discuss and discuss uh, their career paths, see what they had done uh, when they were students, and uh, learn from that. Make connections that may help you find your path to uh, develop your personal development plan and to get that first great job. I hope you make the most of your time with us. And I believe you are making good use of your time by being here right now. I have the honor, I have the honor to introduce to you our keynote speaker, Terrence Yeo. Terrence is an IEEE senior member and scientist with, with FTS International. He holds 10 patents in the areas that include infrared microscop microscopy, oh, I'll get that out right yet, comprehensive sensing and artificial intelligence. He has held a variety of roles in systems engineering, R&D portfolio management program management and corporate strategy. He has a passion for creating technology and is currently growing in his experience with business development. He is the recipient of the Dr. Alexander C. Liang Aerospace Asian Pacific American Association Award. He earned his doctorate in material science from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. In his free time, he enjoys writing code and stories. He also plays team-centric video games and the acoustic guitar, even though if you look in the background, he has an electric guitar back there. <laughs> Everyone, I give you Terrence Yo. Thanks so much, Jim, for the introduction. It's really, really an honor to be here. I am, just like Karen was, super excited to be with you. Um, the last time I spoke to Ada Kappa Nu was in 2018, where I met Jim virtually, uh, because we were all supposed to be slated to fly into Florida. Unfortunately, I had a, a, a huge project that came out, it was called Project Thor, uh, that we were working round the clock, 60 hours a week for, I think, eight to 10 weeks. And it, during that time, I had a choice. I had to fly into Florida and then fly out. Uh, and I said, you know, this is not going to work out. Uh, can we do this virtually? And this was right, 2018, where not many people had did live streams uh, in, in, their, in their time. And I said, well, let's try this. I know Google has this thing where it's a real-time live stream. And um, uh, Nancy and the team was really kind enough for us to be able to try that out. And it worked out really well. I got to meet people virtually and, and speak at the conference. And who would have thought that two years, three years, four years later, we'd be all doing this. Um, I would very much like to be in the conference with you side by side, uh, but right now we're staring uh, at cameras and looking at each other through screens. But this is the best way we're gonna do it and I'm super excited. Uh, and today we're gonna be talking about your career. We're gonna talk about what the difference is between a job and a career. But we're gonna do it in a very different way, in an orthogonal way, where we're looking at a completely different um, industry. Uh, to frame that idea and then go forward with that. So let's move and start. Uh, title of this talk, Delta, Hacking New Opportunities and Managing Risk in Your Career Transitions. And I want to emphasize the word career because career is the key. 
It's not a job. The job that you have is part of your career, but it's not all of it. Um, I learned that actually through this, um, this period between the last uh, four years, between the last time I spoke with you all and today. And the last question that one of the uh, enterprising um, Ada Captain New um, members asked was, how do you manage work-life balance? And I remember just sitting there completely blank in my head because I couldn't manage uh, work-life balance. And I, I described it as having a, a seesaw going back and forth and having that break in between. You had to be just as good as your work as at your home. Well, fast forward uh, a few years and we found out that there's actually a lot to be learned through the stock market and through finances and how people manage risk and how you can manage the risk in your career. So let's, uh, let's pull this thread a little bit. Um, today is actually a very important day. This is called the triple witching hour uh, for uh, stocks and options. Uh, $3.5 trillion of options are expiring today. It's one of the largest op options expiration events in the history, uh, in, the, in the most recent history of the financial markets. Now, we're going to start really, really from scratch, super basic. I'm not going to explain the entire thing, but let's talk about stocks. Stock is uh, the purchase of a part of ownership of a company, right? You're purchasing using your money, you're buying a stock, and you're then entitled to all the rights and privileges of the owner, which typically includes uh, profit and revenue. Um, and that goes in the part, part where the uh, stock goes up, or let's say the stock issues a dividend, you receive that. Well, there's actually a second thing that goes on top of that, is that if you're investing a fair amount of your money, your time into that particular stock, and you're owning that company, what if that company's value drops, right? Uh, wouldn't you like to buy an insurance policy so that if it drops, you are not um, harmed by it? Well, an option is that. It's essentially an insurance policy to keep it. So if the value of that security drops, you still can reclaim it at the original value. Insurance. But there's also another insurance policy where you, if the value of that security goes up, you're actually protected against that too. Now, why would you want that? Well. Uh, in case of in case in point, if you owe somebody the value of the stock, uh, a stock, you want to buy protection against that stock's value going up. And there's actually a really interesting thing. This is a derivative. Options are derivatives, so you don't actually have to own the underlying stock in order to own the option and the right to sell the stock or buy the stock at that price. So now, when you start decoupling that, it gets a little complicated because. Every time you buy a stock, uh, buy a, an option, you're actually just shifting risk, right? You're paying money up front, just like an insurance policy. And with time, that insurance policy, the value actually starts to decrease because nothing has happened at that point in time. Um, and but if you so so what you find is that there's this uh, the the traders have figured out that if they start layering these things in multiple regions you have problems trying to figure things out. And I love this example of this computer game, Slither.io. I don't know if any of you played it. My kids love to play it uh, a few years back, uh, right before COVID. And it was so fun uh, because it's very simple. You're going and you're eating little bits of uh, globs of energy. And then as you eat it, you grow bigger, right? It's a classic snake game, but you're doing it in a multiplayer fashion. And it's fine when you're small and uh, nimble, but once you get bigger, it gets really complicated. So these traders go and buy, and then they sell options. They sell different options that date at different times and expire it gets extremely complicated and then it all can crash down right so so what they do is they, they they calculated these things called the greeks which allows you to then calculate your actual risk in this case a risk uh is uh, in this place I'm, I'm talking about is delta is a measure of the hedge ratio in that if you actually buy an option to protect yourself from let's say a stock dropping the the actual change in the value of that stock percentage wise is actually half of what it should be. And that's because you paid money to buy that option. So in fact, what you need to do in order to hedge a very short-term change in the value of the price, you actually have to buy two options of protection for every one value of your stock. And so it's 50%. And, and how does that translate to a job? How does that translate to a career? It actually translates in this particular manner here, which is in this old adage, that a bird in the hand is worth two in the, right? It's two in the bush, which is two particular options in the future. You have to pay down those two options in order to get that. And we intuitively, we know that because you know that, um, 
you know that as you're looking for a job, you need to look at multiple jobs and not just find that one job and hope that you, you know, put all your eggs in that one basket. Now, uh, the interesting part about um, our time together is, um, let me see if I can, I think I'm frozen now, which is actually quite fun because uh, I have, I have practiced all this time and none of this, uh, this thing. So please pause for a moment. Um, bear with me. Bear with me for a moment. I apologize. But we're almost back online. So just give me a second. OK. Um, so I want to emphasize that your job is not your career. And it comes down to this particular case of you can never sell a home only a house. A job is something that's for your body. It, it you know, pays you back in different things, but typically it pays you back in financial compensation, benefits, all of that. But a career, it pays you back in your soul. And those are the compensations that are not financial, but something extra, something very different. And so when I look back at my career, the last time I spoke to the, to the crew, it was only at the Aerospace Corporation. But within three years, I have had three different jobs at three different companies, one at a large mid-sized nonprofit, uh, a mid-sized nonprofit, one at a, a large uh, technical um, a developer organization for profit, and then now at a small uh, private um, profit, for profit uh, organization. And I've held many roles in that, as you can see, but those roles are just that. They are just roles. Your career is, yes, a sum of these things, but it also is something more. And I want to pull on that thread as we go through the times, as, we, as you look at your pathway to industry. Think about that for your role and your life and your career. Now, um, I want to start and roll it back all the way to the beginning of my career. Um, this was when I was making that decision whether to uh, find, uh, you know, find a job. I was graduating from uh, grad school and I was looking for a position. Uh, the problem was is that it was in 2003 and uh, many of you were either born around that time or uh, were toddlers or uh, uh, quite, quite young at that time. But in 2003, it was right after uh, the dot-com crash. And so I had graduate students that were my mentors coming to tell me, hey, um, you know, come sign on with me. I've got this great sign on bonus. I've got stock options up the wazoo. We're going to Silicon Valley. We're going to change the world. And I was really excited to that until, of course, it was my time to graduate. And then I start contacting them. And their answer was, well, you know, I don't, my stock options are worthless now. And I'm actually looking for a job. So if you hear anything, let me know. Here's my resume. Uh, those, that was the environment I was in. We were in a recession. We we're trying to figure out things. Uh, and case in point, I'm um, material science. So I went to the premier material science research uh, conference. Thousands of people go to this conference. I'm presenting, uh, I have a poster and I'm, I have my resume. I've got it all ready to go. And I go to the job board and there are usually 10 job boards, you know, back to back full of papers of uh, opportunities. There was one board with three pieces of paper on it. One of them was Aerospace Corporation. Um, and obviously I was able to find a position there. Uh, but the other two, these two other opportunities, Intel and MIT, those were gained opportunities. And this is where uh, these are the, uh, the opportunities that have a cost, but in this case uh, was gained. You're not searching for these opportunities. You're, you're prospecting and finding them and you are mining them, right? So how do you do this? Uh, of course, at that point in time, I was interested in looking for orthogonal uh, ideas. So yes, I was really interested in maybe doing some research, uh, but I didn't know I, because my thought growing up um, is that 
in, uh, in undergrad was that I was going to work in Silicon Valley or in Texas doing uh, microelectronic materials and other uh, imaging things. So I figured, okay, well, uh, I will go ahead and um, try to figure out what I want. And the best way to do that is to find orthogonal ideas. So um, at the conference, I found uh, an MIT professor who had research that was very close to mine, but in a different material system. I said, you know, I, I'd really like to work for him. So I actually did research, read about his papers, uh, understood that he was going to give a talk at that day. So I went to that talk. I had my resume. I had my um, business card. And after the talk, I talked to him uh, for a few minutes, uh, thanking him for the presentation and said, here's my resume. I'd really like to work for you. Um, let's, uh, you know, can we make something happen? And he said, you know, uh, why don't you call me next week and we can talk. And so later that week, uh, I called him while he was back in, uh, at MIT and we had a great conversation. And he said, you know what? How about I fly you out there, out here, and look and tour around the facilities and, and see if it's a good match? So he, uh, he bought my tickets. I flew over from Illinois and uh, had a great chat with him. And I thought, oh, this is a really great opportunity. And so we had that as an opportunity to, um, that was really just grown and, and developed uh, through a society, through a materials uh, research conference that was there. With Intel, my professor actually had a relationship with Intel, uh, and he was able to uh, garner an Intel fellowship with me, uh, for me. And so, you know, I actually got a really nice monitor at the time. It was a 15-inch LCD monitor, which in 2000 was pretty much um, unheard of at the time. It was my choice between a 15-inch LCD or a 50-inch uh, CRT. And I said, no, I'm going to take the LCD. And in fact, the LCD is still here with me, still rocking on strong. Um, and it's being used right now for this uh, live stream. Um, and so I had an opportunity there. And as I start thinking through these things, you know, this is where you're thinking the difference between a core job and a core career. Um, the answer was pretty simple. And it wasn't because of the money, because Intel you know, they gave me stock options. They were going to give me um, a computer every year for the rest of my life uh, working there. Uh, it was a great place in Oregon, uh, great weather, all that. Um, aerospace was, um, you know, in Los Angeles. And I remember flying over saying, I'm never going to go to this place. It's so industrial um, and all that. And then MIT, of course, it's MIT. It has uh, such great academics there. It's in the Northeast, someplace I've never been to. Let's try that. Uh, but then something happened in the years before the, coming up to this that really um, gave me the reason for why I chose that. And um, this is the reason. Um, I sat, I remember sitting at my um, uh, table uh, watching TV uh, at lunchtime because I had heard that the first um, plane had hit. And this was the moment when the second plane hit. This was the moment when, and there's audio on this, um, uh, on this TV um, newscast, where the woman is saying, a second plane just hit, I just saw that. And it's not, it's not, it's not an accident. And the, the newscaster is asking, how do you know it's not an accident? And, my, and, and their answer was, it just went straight into, and it's the second plane. And that was the moment that I knew I wanted to devote my experience, my technical ability to make sure something like this would never happen again. And I just want to just sit in this moment and just have you contemplate that. I remember um, emailing a friend that I hadn't talked to in a long time who I knew lived in New York and asked her, how are you doing? What's going on? Are you okay? Um, and that was just one of millions of people trying to call and talk to uh, people that they cared about. Um, it was a time of unifying the country and also shocking the world. And that affected me. And it, it, it's part of my why, right? It's part of my career path. So the, the choice was really obvious. It was, let's go work at the Aerospace Corporation. Let's do some cool space stuff. Let's try to uh, support um, the ability of uh, our country to be a force of good in the world. Uh, it was really fun. Uh, I, I worked about 16 years there. Again, in 2018, I was there uh, doing crazy stuff, having a lot of fun, had a great culture, had a great sense of friends. 
um, that I, I knew I'd be working with for a long, long time. And, and to know that, you know, seeing a, a spacecraft go up and say, you know, I helped keep that up there. I helped make it good uh, is, is just priceless. You can't get paid for that. Um, it, it, it feeds the soul that you know you did something positive for, um, for the world. And, um, and I want to zoom back to 2018 when I'm with you in HKN and you asked about, um, you know, how do you balance life? Because this was, this was my life. This was, this was what I wanted to do. And the answer really was, it came actually in a series of, 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 of this. Um, this is actual video of me driving uh, the Los Angeles freeways every day. Uh, at the very end of my time there, I was pulling in about three hours round trip to get to work. Um, and I started to see, you know, in order to do three hours, I had to wake up at four in the morning. I had to um, kiss my kids um, goodbye and then work for about 11 or 12 hours. It wasn't a, a typical nine, eight hour day, nine hour day. And then get through this traffic in the afternoon and then go home. And um, I had about two hours to eat, say hi to the kids, and go to sleep because I had to go to sleep again about 7 30, 8 o'clock if I wanted a decent amount of hours of sleep, right? Uh, and that started to wear me down. And I said, you know what? A job is not my career. I can't spend all of my life in this one place and be on the other side of the city. So, you know, I did all the math trying to say, can I move to it closer? But then I have my, my kids are embedded in their community. We're embedded in our community there. What, and, and things just came to a breaking point. And I said, you know what? I need to find another position, um, another role that, that is part of my career, but it's a different job, a different location. It was a very difficult choice, but it was also the right choice because when you try to do something completely different, that's when you start to understand your desires, your values. Uh, if you try to do something slightly um, uh, you know, different, you may not get as much information. Is that delta, right? No delta, no data. If you, have, if you don't have enough delta, you won't really get everything that's in there. Um, so I did an about face and I, I decided to work for um, Raytheon. And uh, it, was, it was really incredible because Raytheon was supporting a jet propulsion laboratory. So it was still along my path of space and doing uh, space science, uh, applying technology. Uh, we would work on uh, Europa Clipper. We would work on uh, Psyche. And Psyche's amazing because it's this $10 trillion value you know, uh, of uh, an asteroid in, in the asteroid belt. And we're going to go there and grab a sample and bring it back. You know, these are really exciting stuff. And I had the honor of working with these folks. I had the honor of working these with these folks three weeks before the pandemic hit. I got my job three weeks before the pandemic hit. And then I started to realize that um, it's not about what you do, it's also the people that you work with. And I had a great family at Aerospace, but I also saw that there, there was a great family here and we all worked together uh, to take care of each other. And I think the most, uh, poignant thing that hit me was when my boss gave me a pizza delivered uh, to my doorstep to just say thank you. Thank you for working. Thank you for doing this to ensure our mission success. And then since I was um, you know, a leader, manager over about 30 people in that organization, he said, here's a credit card. And so go buy pizzas for each of your, um, of your employees. And that was a huge honor to be able to uh, buy pizzas for each of them, call them up and ask, what well, would you like on that pizza? Would you like to have a, a pepperoni on it or sausage? And uh, a fair amount of people were in the, in the local area, but others were out in Oregon and other parts of the country. And so I was able, I had to call up a pizza joints in the middle of nowhere saying, can you send a pizza from Bend, Oregon, you know, over here? Or and it, some of them said, we don't deliver. I said, okay, I'll, I'll have them pick it up. Uh, but those were my most influential memories of working at that location is the family and the care for each other. And I think those are important parts to understanding the career. And we did really well. We, we ended up having um, the Large Business Prime Contractor of the Year Award uh, from uh, JPL, uh, and it was a really great experience. Um, but it is it's one of those pathways, right, that um, you, 
you look forward to um, the work and the interesting things, but it's really about the people. It's about us moving together in synchrony. Uh, the interesting part about you know my career is that I spent 16 years. Uh, I got my first job kind of in the old way. And then in looking because of work-life balance, because I saw the runway with my family you know, ending fairly soon, and I want to maximize my commute time from, uh, or minimize my commute time from three hours round trip to 16 minutes round trip, right? What was that like? Uh, I went through all of the um, today's modern way of finding a job. And um, of course, the modern ways I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about is like LinkedIn and Indeed. Uh, but if you think about that process, it's very different from what I found, right? This is, this is more of a funnel. It's more of a marketing funnel where you're maximizing the number of uh, opportunities, not for yourself, because it's free to you, right? So you're the product. It's maximize the opportunities for the hiring agency and paying and the ones that are paying customers, which is uh, these these large companies. Um, and so the, the odds are kind of stacked against you. And you're going to hear a great uh, presentation uh, later on today about uh, jobs and how to interview and how to to find that great job. Um, you know, there's some crazy tips I heard from my sister the other day that um, you you just put in white uh, in white font one point one point font in white all of the keys you know, of that particular job into your resume. So you can't see it, but it puts you into that sorting, right? But you're really filtering. You're putting in a hundred resumes to get maybe 10 interviews, to get maybe one in person or one on Zoom interview, and then maybe get an opportunity there. It's, it's a very much of a funnel thing. It, and we're seeing that social funneling system in many different ways, right? Um, dating apps today, have that similar thing where you're you're not looking at just for looking for the one right you're you're saying oh these next these last 50 look pretty good and we'll see what they think and then eventually we'll be able to text them and then so you're seeing that that funneling system is pervading all of our society it's really making us less human centered and more algorithm centered and um i think um uh, what I, I heard earlier from Karen is is very much that. So we, we need to not focus on the algorithm and, and have that all-seeing algorithm determine our lives. It is a support mechanism, but it's not a crutch. We can't lean on it and expect it to take us that distance. We need to look into ourselves, right? Take care of ourselves. And so uh, the other answer, right, that you'll hear in all of this is about the network, right? Oh, you got to have your network. You have to get those people, your peeps that allow you to find out about those jobs. And it is true, in reality, those jobs, the best jobs are not the ones that are on LinkedIn or Indeed. Because uh, a person who's, um, who's posted it has one of two things. One, they've, they're looking for a person that they, they don't know because they haven't found them. Um, and so they're, they're kind of desperate and they're just casting it out there. Or number two, they already know who they're going to hire they just need to put this out so that they, they're sure that that's the right one. And they want to see if there's others that meet or exceed those expectations, right? Uh, and that it's pure human psychology, but it actually makes a lot of sense because let's say I have uh, um, a position available, I, or rather I've created right, business development, created a new uh, team that that's going to do some really crazy stuff. Um, Am I going to go and go out and just find people at random on there, uh, knowing that all they have to do is put all of my information on one point font? No, I'm going to go through my own mental Rolodex and say, well, who did I work with that I would want to work with again? And um, that's the way, and that's one of the reasons why I, and uh, others have said this, and they'll continue to say is that IEEE is such a great thing because it's one of those networks that you can establish but it's not a network of how many people know me. It's a network of how many people have worked with me. How many people have worked with me and know that I'm solid? And what better a way to do good, uh, to, to find that kind of good person um, when you're working together on something that is completely compensation free, i.e. money free. Um, those are the real people that I think of in my Rolodex where they said, yeah, sure, I'll do this for you, no problem. Now, you know, don't worry about it, I'll just get this done uh, as a favor. Those are the ones that I know, okay, they're already motivated to do the right thing. 
Now, if, I, if we have a great job and there's compensation, of course they're gonna continue to do better, right? And so those are the things that I ask you to think about, challenge you to think about in terms of, and I'm pulling it back to the financials, creating options for yourself. This is allowing you to hack, uh, hack options and create them. Now, uh, the interesting part about Delta is like, if you've got a job right now, right, you're always gonna be looking at multiple jobs. Don't ever quit this job. Don't ever sell this job before you have another one that is, has been brought in. But if you're looking, you need to look very far and wide through your network and through the people who know you are, have done good work for in the past. Uh, that's super, super important. And the other thing is, is that you never know what work you do can come back and actually be a good thing. And, and I'll, I'll give an example later on in the talk, but those are the things that I, I challenge you to think about, that it's not about networking, uh, knowing the, the maximum number of people, it's about working with the maximum amount of people and, and doing good, doing something good together. So let's move on because I had my why, but that why was 20 years ago. Um, you have uh, a different why, right? And um, I was part of it in this part of generation, but we're just coming uh, through the middle, I would say, of a coronavirus a pandemic. Uh, we are um, in a very challenging time. We have shifted and changed our economy, and the U.S. has prospered in this time. We, we have operated through the problems, not uh, succumbed to the problems. Um, so you have one of these things that, um, that are opportunities to think about how you can serve. And I, I think, again, I, I go back to uh, Karen's um, presentation. Uh, she found those opportunities and she found a way to work with people in order to, uh, in order to modify her research that was for cancer towards COVID and to be able to then enable other people to use it without having that medical background. Uh, to give them guides, right? When there were no guides, there were no tests, right? So much has happened in the last two years. And um, I challenge you to think about, uh, are these things? And of course, you're not, you're, you're, you're a really interesting generation because you don't just have one issue, you actually have two, right? We have another kind of a 9-11 um, for the world. To know that there are, there are entities out there that, want to do harm so i challenge you what can you do and it doesn't mean going into battle it doesn't mean you know designing the next next thing that will stop this but there's so much more here i, I just saw on um, linkedin um was it linkedin no i was on tv today that uh, uh, a team who's been working to provide clean water for third world countries now is changing their scheme and uh, their focus and delivering clean water purifiers to the folks in Ukraine because water purity is such a huge issue right now. And we know that without clean water, uh, we can't survive very long, right? That's the kind of application, advancing technology for the benefit of humanity. That's what IEEE is about. That's our tagline. So continue to think about that. Don't focus on just finding a job. Find a career that fits life and your life and your impact in the world. So moving on, you know, I challenge you, what's your why? What's your why? Because once you know your why, then all of these decisions, should I go to this company? Should I go to that company? Uh, should I strike it out on my own and start my own company? All of those things will make sense. And the, the choice gets pretty easy once you know that. Um, so again, look at your career. It, that's the food for your soul, because at the end, the 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 best, um, the the highest paying uh, CEO will retire, but their career is not over when they retire. And if you've been an engineer your whole career, and I, actually I've gone back to my technical roots um, uh, right now in this part, this this part of my career, um, there's still something there that that. You know, it's, it, I know that I'm doing other things for the good of humanity in whatever I do. So I'd like to challenge you about that because once you understand that, then the technologies will come into play, whether it would be AI technology, whether it's um, a biotechnology or working on blockchain, uh, working on space, commercial space, which is super exciting uh, to be able to see that flourish and to be that, you know, that broomstick in space, right? That, that, that is the best answer that we have. Yes, ingenuity, focus on making things better. Let's not try to 
do it the same way just over and over again because that's the definition of craziness. Let's try to try to make it better, reusable, cheaper, faster, and very much better. And this is this is, I love to say those three words together because in the 90s that was kind of the a really bad set of words because it meant cutting costs and keeping things um, um, not as quality, but maintaining quality. In fact, getting better quality than what we have today. That's the power of technology. That um, a lot of our inflation that you're seeing in our economy, the prospect of recession will be thwarted by you developing technology. Technology is one of those things that tamps down inflation and enables everyone to prosper and to thrive. And um, I think about uh, my, my career, um, and I say, you know, it hasn't actually started with my first job. Um, my career started when I was 10 years old uh, reading physics books. It started when I was watching Star Trek The Next Generation, where a team of engineers and scientists and leaders work together to make good in, and explore space. It was also when I watched Knight Rider, and I, I've been watching it on Netflix. Uh, it's been really interesting to see, hey, the car I bought looks a lot like the car that, um, that Michael Knight drove. That, that explains a lot. But can one person make a difference in the world? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Um, one thing I want to leave with you is uh, in 2018, I came to you in a live stream. I'm coming to you in live stream now. What I didn't know was two years later, uh, in March of 2020, when everything shut down, three weeks after I got my new job, guess what? We all got locked down. And that live stream experience, I was the only one who knew how to set up a live stream for my church so that we can have 150 people gather together and be together in this very scary and very hard time. And I have IEEE HKN, um, Ada Kapanu, to thank for that. Um, to be able to just push that technology envelope two years before was enough so that we were all able to come together and to support one another in this time. So I just want to leave with that thank you that you, uh, IEEE, has always pushed the envelope, and I encourage you to push that envelope. Find your why and understand your job is not your career. Your job feeds your body. Your career feeds your soul. So with that, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions, and um, thanks for your time. Terrence, I just want to thank you on behalf of everybody in the audience for that talk. Um, it was more than just speaking to, you know, a career or I'm um, sorry, a job, but to our lives. And I, like you, lived through 9-11 and knew exactly that point I needed to do more for others. And where was my part? So I want to thank you for that. Um, we do have some questions from the audience. I would love to pose them to you now. Um, so, and we'll also have them um, up on the screen so that the rest of our uh, viewers can see them. So the question came in is, do you think that finding your why is something you actively hunt for or work toward to identify, or is it something that will come to you more organically? That's a really good question. Um, I think finding your why is, I'd say it's a lot like love, right? You, you don't really know it till it just hits you and you, you know this is what you've been built for. And it's a mix, right? It's a mix of your upbringing. It's a mix of who you are, the circumstances that you're at. Uh, but it's also a mix of intentionality. You need to be intention to look for that, to always have an ear open and say, okay, is this really where I need to be? Is this where my place in the world is? And asking that question and, and really focusing on that not to a narcissistic point, right? Because we don't want to be, we, we want to focus on that. We want to just say, there, there is a place for me in the greater whole that really will make a difference. How do I maximize that? Because we are all options, if you think about it, right? We've been given a set amount of time and that time is, get, grows shorter and shorter. A job, a career converts the future option of time into tangible things. And um, the thing that I want to share also is this concept of money. We talked about the finances, right? Uh, gaining money doesn't give you why. Uh, but gaining money, all it really says is that 
society has a debt to you. They're indebted to you for what you've done, how you've influenced and touched others. And when that happens, they give you this little number called money. It could be on a piece of paper. It could be on a blockchain or what have you to say, thank you. So therefore I'm indebted and your serv my services and goods from the greater whole can be now affected by this piece of debt. Um, so just think of it that way, that it's not about accumulating money because you don't want to accumulate debt because ultimately you're going to, you're going to be, we're, we're all going to go um, to the grave and, um, and what's that story um, is, is an important part, but it's a very good question. And I'll continue to think about that. Uh, our next question is, uh, can you talk about how HKN and IEEE prepare you for your career, given that IEEE's whole uh, mission is to advance humanity, advance technology for the betterment of humanity? So um, how can it prepare you for your career? Yes. Um, so IEEE, for me, I'll tell you the story. I met my advisor out of an option. Um, I was sitting on his desk and he came in and he said, uh, are you going to teach this class? And I said, yeah, I'll teach this class. And he goes, okay. And he dumps the, the, the notes on me and says, go teach this class. And I know he was calling my bluff. And then I upped it again. And I said, you know, I can't do it now, but I'll do the next class. And he didn't believe me. Um, but that was actually the beginning point months before I had thought of joining uh, or, or becoming a grad student. Uh, and then when it came time, my friend who was sitting next to them said, why don't you go call him up, right? Those options, you never know what's going to happen. But what you're doing is you're increasing the network effect by being there, by, by being engaged, by doing something that is relatively you know, small in time. I spent a weekend studying for this and now having repercussions across history. He was the one that said, you know, join IEEE. It is a great organization. Uh, it has paths for um, advancement, you know, to become a senior, um, a senior member and um, to become a fellow uh, and, and not just because you did technical work, because you contributed back to the careers and lives of others. Um, so IEEE is unique in that, in that we're a society that focus not only on technical, not only on standards, but also on the greater whole. Uh, and so I, I see, I've seen that in my career, and I think you'll see that as you continue to um, uh, uh, give back through the organization. Okay, the next question we have for you is, knowing what you know now, what would you tell the younger version of yourself who is sitting in LA traffic for hours on end? Is there one bit of advice that you wish you could convey to yourself at that time? Um, yes, and the answer is, you're going to miss it. And this is the funniest thing, right? So. Um, I was in um, uh, Raytheon uh, working space programs, and then this opportunity came about. And it really was literally somebody else had in mind me for an opportunity. And um, because I worked with them for years on end, we we're just colleagues. And the opportunity was great. And so I told my family, we're going to try something completely different, going to be complete orthogonal. Coming here to the East Coast, um, my whole family are all Southern Californians born and raised. I was the only one that had grew up anywhere else. And all of them love this place. And it's really weird for me because the one thing I miss about Southern California is the freeway. And I think this is the thing that you, you, you kind of think, you think about the grass being greener on the other side. It's only greener because somebody else watered it. Somebody else poured into it. And then you discount the greenness in your own life right then and there. The time that I had on, on the freeway was actually time to think, time to contemplate life, time to wonder what's valuable in life. The time there, I, I recorded you know, hours and hours of video for the Yo Want to Go series, which is on uh, YouTube, uh, my YouTube page. Um, it, those series, had I known, you know, uh, was just an influential part of my life. I, I was trying to blog this and trying to think about, you know, what is life, what's 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 performance, what's good, um, and I ended up taking some of those ideas and writing a book, which um, I'm hoping to publish in the in the summer and have a free edition for the IEEE for free. Um, so definitely go ahead and um, 
you know, uh, use this QR code to link to my LinkedIn, and I'll definitely share it with the, the network uh, after that. But that's the thing I would, I, I would say is don't, uh, you're going to miss that time, even though you hated it at that moment. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Uh, two more questions. Um, how would you recommend young professionals building links to others who have interests that are similar to yours? Yes, that's a very good question. Um, and I think we're all somewhat challenged now because of social media in some ways. It's been a dilemma, right? It's connected you, but it connects you in very tenuous links. And what I see and uh, you know, what I've been using, let's say texting or your, all, your, all your messaging apps is to create an opportunity to have a connection where you can then broaden and deepen that connection. But I found the best way to make a connection is to serve together. Um, and it's really interesting. I, I, I think one of the solutions for me is um, if I would have to, let's say, date, um, I would not go through those uh, apps. I would actually go to a place in which I wanted to spend my life doing uh, in, in life, in, in, in real part of, of relationships. And I know being married that the love portion is actually a very small period of that time. The time that you spend together is mostly in service and you're serving one another, you're taking care of one another. So I would actually go to a service organization. Um, you know, it could be a community service organization where you're helping feed the poor or clothe the poor or what have you and just serve. And then try to find somebody in that area because they're also having that same heart. So in the same sense, professionally with IEEE, um, you have great organizations here. You have technical societies uh, that are focused on advancing um, a specific area, whether it's RF, whether it's AI, whether it's um, uh, any part of, of technology, you'll find a society there and get connected. And there's always local chapters. So go there and start meeting people and working through that. Because you'll see IEEE is not a flat organization. It's very broad. It's actually a matrix in that you have people who are, uh, who are uh, more senior than you in their walk in, in, in this career and also more junior than you. And you want to always pay it forward and pay it backwards all at the same time because that is what true mentorship is. You're mentoring and being mentored at the same time in both directions and also sideways. Great, um, we are coming up at the end of our time. It's 103, we are scheduled to go to 105. I have one more question, um, so maybe we can get through that quickly and then um, sure. we'll just have some closing thoughts. Uh, so you had mentioned that you should not leave a current position until you have uh, that new position. That has always been the advice. But the great resignation has changed the paradigm. How do you see that changing work environment that was altered by the pandemic impacting how recent engineering graduates see their career options? Hmm. That's a very good question. And I think it's somewhat new, so new that a lot of us don't have that answer. We're still trying to operate through that rather than adapting and saying this is part of our lives. Uh, one thing I did see when we had everybody isolated is that we could still do the day-to-day -day pretty easily. But when you start thinking about innovation, when you start doing the new things, pushing that boundary and doing things, you, nothing, nothing works better than being in the same room together. To have the entire whole being there, not just to see their face with a 200 millisecond lag to it but to really be able to touch them and just say, and you know, high five them and be able to share a meal together. These are things that are fundamental to our existence as humans. Um, so I would say that um, you can, uh, in some ways it's easier, right? You can still hold a job and look for other jobs because you're not in the same office. And I think that's what some companies don't like about working remotely is that you are effectively a freelance uh, entrepreneur and you happen to be working there. And the only thing that ties you to that company is the laptop, the company laptop with the company logo and maybe a company mug, right? There's nothing else holding you back. So I think in many ways, it's an important thing to be employed though, and not to be looking for employment because that is a social cue that people will pick up and say, well, okay, if this person didn't like the way things were going and so they quit their job and now they're looking for a job, that's a very different viewpoint than they're working 110% in their job and then they're looking for new opportunities, right? Burning the hand, two in the bush, maximizing and, and mitigating your delta risk 
by having those two things paired together. Uh, I think you need to do that kind of calculation in that. Um, and I know we're done with our question and answer. I'm, I will be on um, the mentoring system afterward uh, to talk and feel free to LinkedIn with me afterward. I do want to say one thing. Just remember, if you didn't get anything out of this, is that your job is for your body for the day to days. The career is for your soul. And so look for those things that feed your soul because the job will come. Once you know your soul, because I know so many people who have a great job with great benefits, great money, and they're just empty inside. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that. I, we, you want to have a life that is full. And, um, and, and that's what I have to share as your very end. Thanks so Sorry. much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so very much. So many wonderful thoughts. I love your holistic view of a career. I think that gets lost in the shuffle. I think you're right. People are kind of running into the next opportunity, just trying to figure out what financially is the best thing, but not really looking into inward. And I, I just thank you so much for sharing that with our audience, because it is such an important part of who we all are as human beings. Um, so again, on behalf of HKN, on behalf of President Jim Conrad, who had to leave us early, I just want to thank you uh, wholeheartedly for being here today. And I look forward to seeing you around the conference. Um, and I hope that uh, we can, uh, our audience members know that they can directly email you because you are, um, have placed your profile into the system. So they can literally go over to the people tab message you directly and hopefully um start that that conversation that seems to be so very important Great. have a wonderful thank you day thank you so much Stacey. thanks so much uh see you next mm -hmm. time bye-bye thank you